So keep in mind the fact and numerator, uh, first generator, and then this part, the tensor, encoder, convert, and weights. Because that is called soft program composition. Because these three are the main contributions of the authors. So now we'll see how the experiments support their claims in a modular way. Starting with the enumeration algorithm. So does it actually yield a reasonable amount of ground atoms? And does the clause generation technique actually improve the performance of differential dissolver? As in like, uh, does the beam searching approach help? And is the algorithm efficient in terms of memory and computational costs? And finally, does the method actually learn from the noisy and structured examples? So to prove all these claims, the authors have used five different ILP tasks and uh, they have given structured examples for it like trees and sequences. So they kept the variables X, Y, Z, B and W in the capital B constant, where gamma is the smoothing parameter which was so just explained. So coming to the first task, which is the member task, which is basically the membership function for lists. So this is how the language would be described, where P is the predicate, which is a parity to, and then capital F is the function parity, again that's two. Then the initial clause is basically X comma Y, and then capital A is the set of constants in that. And the bottom three lines would be how the problem would be described. As you can see that A is a member of A comma C and hence, right? that's how it's represented. So the same goes for the plus operation in natural numbers, same uh, notations. Uh, but for the all the experiments, they have only used the maximum body length to be one. And then they also use the maximum number of nested functions that can be used in the function symbols, again, one. It's sim again similar for the delete operation in lists. Uh, again, you can see like how uh, B is deleted from A, C, B, and it's it from A, C. That's the positive examples, and then here's a negative set of examples, and this is the background knowledge. Uh, another the final task is sub three, where uh, we are trying to find the subscription relationship between the binary trees. And the, again, the notation is same. You can check it out. So coming to the first experiment where the claim was was the clause uh, was the enumeration algorithm giving reasonable number of ground atoms. So you can see in this table that uh, for each data set for each class, it is giving a pretty good number of ground atoms. And in this setting, they can't use the uh, differential ILP method as is because a DILP method would actually do go through all the ground atoms, but when function symbols are involved, that would be infinite number and that wouldn't be feasible in this scenario. So the first experiment was success. And the second experiment is to check the clause generation algorithm's efficiency. So in this experiment, we're comparing two different uh, approaches for generating the clauses. First would be the proposed one in the paper, which is the searching and refinement. And then the second would be without any beam searching, the naive approach. So to compare these approaches, they defined a variable, say capital N, for example, where they're changing the maximum number of clauses that can be generated in clause generation step. So the generation will obviously stop as when the generated number of clauses will cross the maximum number of clauses that have to be generated. So you can see that this blue color curve is the proposed approaches result, and then the red color curve is the naive base approach result. And you can see that AUC scores for proposed method are higher with fewer number of clauses. That means we are getting an efficient search space for the clauses. So yeah, experiment two is a success again. And then the third experiment is for the soft program composition to check if it's efficient in terms of memory and computational costs. So again, they use two different strategies to Two different strategies to test if uh, it's memory and computationally efficient. First would be assigning multiple weights for the each clause, which is the proposed method. And the second one would be assigning two dimensional matrix weights to pair of clauses. And in this experiment, they compare the number of parameters as well as the mean runtime in the during the gradient. 
It's basically the differential function. So you can see that for the proposed method, again, the number of parameters are less, and the mean run time is again as fast as when compared to the pairing of which. And hence, it is uh, memory computationally efficient. Uh, the fourth experiment was to check if the proposed approach is uh, robust to noise. So to do that, they have a value of proportion uh, for which they're flipping the labels and basically they're getting this label data. So this is the experiment for uh, flipping that number of uh, mislabeled labels. And you can see that the test error, which is for mean square error, is pretty less. And this is an example for uh, the programs that have been learned for each task. And they are human readable, they are interpretable. For example, in the plus and in the final clause, you can see that this is uh, considering the commutative property of natural numbers. Or in the append problem, you can see that in the final uh, clause, over here, when we are appending y to z, we get v. So similarly, when we append y with the head of x to z, we get a v with head of x. So basically, this can be any function of uh, x comma y, any combination of that function. So to conclude, we start. We want to be looking at structural learning, and uh, the existing ILP and differential ILP methods will not out of scope for it because. They learn continuous parameters but not discrete structures. And, um, and hence, authors propose this novel uh, DILP method for structural learning, where they use noisy data as well. And the data consists of several clauses with identical predicates and function symbols. And in doing so, the three main contributions was the clause generation, where they use beam searching with refinement. And the second was enumeration algorithms, which is to get a reasonable number of ground atoms. And finally, the soft program composition, which is uh, basically assigning multiple weights to each clause. And putting them all together, they're able to learn a functional solution for logic programs, which is again memory information. And this has not has been done by the existing uh, DLP ISS method or any standard IIP. So personally, I observed one limitation that in all of the experiments, you can see that the maximum number of the length B that Kosu mentioned is just one. And the maximum length of uh, the nested functions which have been used is again one. But they did claim that they can go beyond that. But I didn't see any experiments on that. So that is one limitation I found. And then the other limitation is scalability for large scale programs like sorting. To take care of uh, Complex programs like sorting, you might need a high high quality search space where you can include a more richer bias or you can include meta rules. So that is one solution you can do. And if anyone's interested for future works, you can maybe try in using the induction of structural knowledge with the perception of a neural network, like learning learning sorting from captured images. You can hold Questions. <laughs> so, from what I understood, uh, you identify strong clauses using the tree structure in the initial part. So, depending on the level of the tree, the strength uh, waivers it uh, reduces that as you go into the tree. That is how you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that so, what would happen to the complexity if B was set to a value higher? This method should be working for that too. Uh, the complexity would increase, but not as much as my uh, GPU would have handle. But they didn't show any experiments like that. Well, I mean, would it be exponential in B or less uh, intuition? Okay. Yeah, so uh, the intuition, uh, I should set it here. The, so the way the extra atoms in the body will come in is through that same beam search. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that uh, it will be projecting that you have more uh, atoms in the body, so you will combine all the atoms you know, and generate more uh, number of rules. That's not how the clauses of the rules will be generated. So that's why we feel that 
uh, it, it will only be from that same search space only that it will come. So, uh, if we, so I think the way the complexity will increase is if we increase the n compatibility uh, in the beam search, then uh, uh, definitely the amount of time uh, uh, it will require to complete that will definitely go up, but not necessarily with the number of clauses in the body. Would um, in, in the result of the beam search, is there anything that would happen there that would cause the number of clauses generated by that to explode? Um, no, it's, it's, it's always controlled because uh, you control the NB and Okay. That's the whole point of the refinement operation. Yeah. To not like that's, that's what they say is like one of the main contributions. What I feel is that the kind of problems they're tackling, it, it doesn't really require them to have multiple clauses or sub clauses in the body, basically. And that's that's probably why they have not uh, gone the and shown it. Like it's just, like it's not that complex enough that they need to have that. Other questions? All right, let's thank the speakers. <laughs>